Hi, welcome to Algebra 2, Lesson um, 9-1. We are learning a new topic, Topic 9, Solving Quadratic Equations. In this topic, we're going to um, think about this essential question. How do you use quadratic equations to model situations and solve problems? So we're going to learn how to solve quadratic equations. And obviously, we've got a lot of work real-world problem applications. So it starts with solving quadratic equations using graphs and tables, solving quadratic equations by factoring, rewriting radical expressions, solving quadratic equations using square roots, completing the square, quadratic formula, and the discriminant. And then we're going to solve systems of linear and quadratic equations at the end of this topic. So the topic vocabulary are completing the square, discriminant, linear quadratic system, product property of square roots, quadratic equation, quadratic formula, root, center form, zero product property, zeros of a function. So some of them, um, we have already talked about it in previous topics, um, but we're going to go deeper into the quadratic equations. So let's get started with lesson one, solving quadratic equations using graphs and tables. In this lesson, you'll be able to use graphs and tables to find solutions of quadratic equations. Um, and we're going to look at the vocabulary words, quadratic equation, and zeros of a function. So let's start with explore and reason. The path of a golf ball hit from the ground resembles the shape of a parabola. Yeah, it's a curve. What point represents the golf ball before it is hit off the ground? So from here, the man has the ball right here. And so what point does this represent if this was uh, on a coordinate graph? So that would be the y-axis, right? And then this would be the x-axis. So this point right here, the start of the golf ball, would be represented by 0, 0. And what point represents the golf ball when it lands on the ground? So over here, on the other point over here. So it seems like it... The sign says 200 yards, right? So the distance from this point to that, the horizontal distance from this, uh, from the from the beginning to the end, would be 200 yards. So that means this point represents 200, and y is still going to be zero because y represents height of the ball from the ground. So the, if it's on the ground, the height is zero, right? So your x is 200, but your y is equal to zero. So 200 comma zero would represent the golf ball when it lands on the ground. And so now, could we explain how the points in part A and B are related to the ball's distance from the ground? So the ball's distance from the ground is the height, right? Um, so that means they both have a height of zero. That's the common uh, point that they have. So both of those points, the ball's distance from the ground is zero. And that just means they hit the ground. They're on ground and the height is none. So let's explain that in words. I'm going to type it right here. Both points have a y coordinate of zero. So at both of those points, the ball's distance from the ground is zero. Okay, so that is an introductory um, situation that we can find, we can easily find in real world that uses a parabola of the shape of quadratic equation. So we're going to ask this essential question in this lesson. How can graphs and tables help you solve quadratic equations? Let's start with example one. Recognize solutions of quadratic equations. Why are the x-intercepts of the graph of a quadratic function important to the solution of a related equation? So um, we have a quadratic equation x squared minus 16 is equal to 0. Quadratic equation is an equation of the second degree. So any equation that have a second degree polynomial is a quadratic equation. The related function of a quadratic equation with 0 on one side is the quadratic expression given on the other side. So 
you're going to graph the related function x squared minus 16. That is the quadratic equation um, on this, this side when the other side is equal to 0. So you're going to graph this quadratic equation. And then you see that this line, x squared minus 16, is equal to 0 at these two points. So these two graphs are equal to the y, f of x. f of x um, represents y here, right? So if f of x is this graph, then this graph, f of x, is equal to 0. When y is equal to 0, um, your x values are negative 4 and 4. So we're finding the values of x where your graph is equal to 0. Okay, so the solution of a quadratic equation are the values, or it could be one value that make the equation true, or there could be no solutions. We'll see that later. The x-intercepts for uh, in result would be the solutions of the equation. Okay, so the graph of the function has two x-intercepts, so equation has two real solutions. Why do we say it's real? Because there are is there a non-real solution? Huh. Yes, we will talk about that later. But um, yeah, this makes sense. It's real. It makes sense in our real life. So yeah, we have two possible solutions, one possible solution if your graph uh, just meets your y-axis at exactly one point, right, then you have an x-intercept, like one x-intercept, right? Or if you have a graph that doesn't even intersect zero, then it means your graph is never going to equal to zero. So then you don't have a real solution, right? So there are different types of solution you may have. The zeros of a function correspond to the x-intercepts of the function when you graph them. Okay, so now let's find the solutions of x squared minus 14x plus 49 equals 0. So we're going to graph the function x squared minus 14x plus 49. And so the vertex would be at 7 comma 0. The graph touches the x-axis at like at one point, right? But it doesn't cross. So that means we have one solution because there's only one y-intercept. So the only solution is when x is equal to 7. That's okay. And what about this one? Solutions of x squared plus 3x plus 7 equals 0 would be none. So there is no x-intercept, which means this, the equation has no real solutions. So that would be your final answer. It's okay if you have no real solution or just one solution. That's okay. But you need to know there are three different possibilities for having solutions in quadratic equations. Two solutions, one solution, and no solution. If you have a solution or two solutions, then you need to specify the solutions. But if there's no solution, you can just write no solution. Okay, so let's try the try question number one. What are the solutions of each equation? Pause the video and see if you can do it by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? So if you graph this, um, graph this point, uh, when x is equal to when x is equal to 0, you're going to have um, minus 36. So you have 0 comma negative 36. And then uh, when x is equal to 6, 6 squared minus 36 is finally 0. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right here. What about negative 6? If you square negative 6, you're still going to get positive 36, and 36 minus 36 is also 0. So you have negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 6, um, comma 0 as well. And then you'll have a graph that looks like this. Okay. And so the solutions of each equation for uh, solution of this equation, part A, would just be negative 6, comma, negative 6 and 6. So x is equal to negative 6 or 6. Whoops. Yeah. And part B, if you graph this, um, this one, you're going to get something like 
So that's the x-intercept and that's the y-intercept. Um, let's graph it here. So let's see, plug in some points because we're gonna learn how to graph them easily later. But right now, we're going to plug in one by one. Oh yeah, you guys learned factoring, right? So if you factor it out, actually you didn't learn zeros of the function yet. So let's plug in points one by one. And so you're going to see that, what about three? right? Um, 3 squared is 9. When x is 3, you have 3 squared is 9, plus 3 times 6 would be 18, plus 9. Oh, that's a really big positive number. Um, you're going to get 36, 3 comma 36. And then, yeah. And then what about 0? When x is 0, you get 0 plus 0 plus 9, 9. Yeah. So, um, Let's keep going. Uh, what about negative 3? When the x is negative 3, this becomes 9. And then that becomes negative 18 plus 9. So it's like 18 minus 18. So that's finally 0. What about negative 4? If it's negative 4, then it's going to be 16 minus 24 plus 9. And then... Yeah, and then it's going to be 1. Oh, so then it becomes positive again. And then you'll see the pattern where negative, if you plug in other points, negative 3 comma 0 would be your minimum point. And then you have negative 4 comma 1, and then uh, negative 2 comma 1, and then so on. Yeah, and then 0 comma 9. So let's say 9 is here. And then 36 is like way up. Yeah. No. Then, yeah, negative 6, you'll get 9 as well. Yeah. And then you'll see only one x intercept when you graph it. So then your x is just equal to negative 3. And so when you figure it out, figure out solutions by graphing, it may take a while because you're going to plot points one by one. And that may, that's not going to be efficient, right? So you can use um, tables to solve quadratic equations. So if you have a graphing calculator, you can plot the equation in there and go to table to figure out the tables here, right here. Okay, so when x is 1, y is 0, x is 2, y is negative 4, and dot, 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 you'll see when y is equal to 0, you have the solutions, x for x, right? So if you don't see any zeros, then you can type in in your calculator and keep, um, keep exploring your points. But it's going to be a lot faster than you having to calculate it all by yourself by hand, right? So you can use graphing technology um, and tables. This is another method. So again, this is another, another um, example where you're going to graph. Uh, you're going to put on the equation, and you have to figure out where um, y is equal to 0. And you don't see another solution, but try to check if they are going to have another 0. But obviously, if you see the pattern that your y is increasing again or decre like decreasing um, after a point, then you'll see that um, that, is, that is just going to be your solution. So... Um, yeah, you can check some other points like this, 0 0.25, you can plug it in, and you'll see that y keeps, uh, keeps uh, increasing and increasing and increasing. Yeah, so um, you don't really see zeros in between, right? Yeah, so you can, yeah, in this case, you can um, estimate, maybe it's not an approximate solution, but you know it's going to cross the x, the y axis, the x axis, right? From negative to positive, you have to cross the uh, x axis. But even, even if it's not approximate, you can, um, even if it's not accurate, you can give an approximate solution.
So this is going to be about like between in between 0 0.25 and 0 0.5, or you can just keep plugging in numbers that are that gets that get closer and closer to your estimate and round it up to the greatest the the hundreds or the nearest tens. Um, yeah, whatever appropriate it is for you. So. Look at try number two. You can find so solutions for 4x squared plus 3x minus 7 equals 0 using a table. If you don't have a graphing calculator by hand, you can use desmos.com. Okay, so pause the video. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are we ready? So if you plug it into your graphing calculator, whether it be your actual calculator or gra uh, your computer calculator, um, you'll see the tables, right? So the tables for 4x squared plus 3x minus 7 uh, would be, let's see. So you'll see something like, Oh, negative 3 comma 20, negative 2 comma 3, negative 1 comma negative 6. Oh, positive to negative, there must be something in between. There must be 0 in between, right? And then you'll see uh, 0 comma negative 7 and then 1 comma 0. Oh, here is 1, 0. And then 2 comma 15 and so on, right? So now it's increasing again, but then it hits the lowest point somewhere over here, right? It may be 0 comma negative 7 or it may be like in between. But um, yeah, but you will you will expect another 0 over here. So why don't you um, put some numbers for x in between negative 2 and negative 1. So let's say negative 1.5. So let's see. Let's go to decimals since my calculator is not working as well. I have an old calculator. So I'm going to, in decimals, I'm going to plug in my equation 4x squared plus 3x minus 7. And then I'm going to go to settings and make a table like that. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Um, yeah, and so between negative two and three, you're going to have zero somewhere. So negative 1.5, oh, it's negative. So negative 1.6, 7, 8, oh, it becomes positive here, right? So by graph, you can see that there is a point right here, negative 1.75 comma zero. Huh. and then 1 comma 0. So by graph, if you use a graphing technology, you can easily see the points over your mouse in decimals. But if you don't have the function in your graphing calculator, right, um, then you have to use the table, right? So what if, or what if you just have a table? Or what if you just have an equation and you're not allowed to use any technology? Then you may have to make your table by yourself by plugging in numbers. And that's gonna take a long time but you know, you, sh you should still know how to do it, right? So basically you plug in numbers that are closer and closer. Negative eight was positive and negative seven is negative. So it's gonna be between negative 1.7 and 1.8, right? So what, now you're going to go to the, uh, the second decimal place, right? You can keep 
plugging in your answers like that, oh, and negative 1.75 gives you a zero. There we go. Um, yeah, and that's one way to figure out. I know it's not the most efficient way. So um, give your answer to the nearest tenth. So we're going to, um, yeah, approximate. So it's going to be about negative 1.75 and, and 1, right? Yeah. So nearest tenth, that means we have to, uh, if we're approximating, we, we have to round it up to the tenth, but we're not approximating this one because this is an exact solution. Negative 1.75 is exact, right? So in your graph, if you rather had negative seven, negative 1.76256 dot, 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 and the decimal does not end, then then it, you have to round it up and estimate it. But if it's still an exact solution like this, oh, it's exactly negative 1.75, then you don't have to round it up. You can just write it like that. So it's um, x is negative 1.75 and 1. Okay, let's look at example three. Use approximate solutions. Anastasia hits a, her golf ball off the tee. The height of the golf ball is modeled by the function f of x equals negative five x squared plus 25x plus one. Where, is a, where x is the number of seconds after the golf ball is hit. How long is the golf ball in the air? So again, we have a golf ball example with a parabola that um, the, the ball travels. And x represents the seconds in the air, y represents the altitude. So you can trace the graph on your screen to see when x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. y is equal to 0 in the beginning, right? And also when x is equal to 5.0. 0, 4, about. So after um, 5.04 seconds, about five seconds, the ball hits the ball hits the ground. So that's how we can apply this in real life. So let's look at try number three. At the next tee, a golf ball was hit and modeled by another um, function. When will the golf ball hit the ground? So obviously, you'll if you have two, you probably have two. Um, You'll probably hit, you'll probably have two zeros, right? And so you're going to find two zeros and um, the solutions, the x-intercepts, and see after which second uh, it will hit the ground. So pause the video and see if you can figure the answer out by yourself. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, so if you model this in your, um, in a graph, you'll have something like this, right? So if you have a ball example, you'll always have a the leading coefficient equal to negative because the parabola has to look down, right? Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Your ball cannot start from infinity, go down, and go up. So it's always going to look like this, where y equals 0 would represent your ground. And it's odd because um, this, this uh, I guess we started counting at negative 0 0.359 seconds away. Um, yeah, it's odd because it doesn't start from, this graph doesn't start from 0, 0, but if we started from 0, 0, uh, we know that, yeah, this is not, a, not the best example, but um, we know that the ball will hit the ground um, about one second later, 1.05 seconds later. Uh, we started to see the ball at height, height 6. So, yeah, this is not the best point to represent when we started counting or recording our ball because usually you'll start recording at 0, 0. And so 
yeah, this is not the most accurate graph, but that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. It's the next T. So your ball, it could start somewhere else, and that's fine. Um, but obviously, the Y represents the height. So yeah, it still is not the best function. But um, the, ball, the golf ball hits the ground about 1.05 seconds later. From the given function, this would be the best answer. All right, so that was our first lesson of this topic. Let's summarize our topic, quadra uh, our lesson, um, solving quadratic equations using graphs and tables. So a quadratic equation can be written in standard form where you have ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero where a is not equal to zero. So if, there, if a is equal to zero, then it's a linear equation, not quadratic, right? So yeah, you need to have a power of a degree of two for your leading, code, your leading term. So a quadratic equation can have zero, one, or two real solutions. Zeros of the function related to a quadratic equation are solutions of the equation. So zeros are basically the x-intercepts. And then they are also the solutions of the quadratic equation. So yeah, a lot of times we, they mean the same thing, but um, yeah, we, we use different words because in the context there are some words that uh, are more appropriate. So, um, but remember that they mean most of the times the same thing. When, you're, when we're finding a solution to the quadratic equation, we're looking for x-intercepts and the zeros. And zeros are basically when y is equal to zero because x-intercept by definition is when y is equal to zero, right? The values of x when y is equal to zero. So algebraically, these are the solutions for this example. And then you can graph to figure out the x-intercept Visually, you can use the table to figure out the points um, by table. And so that was lesson 9-1, solving quadratic equations using graphs and tables. Thanks for watching, and we're going to continue our next lesson in the next video. Bye!